In this video, we'll cover rigging and setup of Motocrane Radical using the Motocrane Speed Rail Suction Grid, or SSG, kit. Before using the SSG kit, make sure that your vehicle has a clean roof surface free of any dirt or debris. Start by placing one suction cup in the front corner of your roof, confirming that the suction cup has a complete seal with the body panel around its perimeter. Actuate the vacuum pump until the cup is fully seated and there is no red line exposed on the pump. Loosen the one and a half inch speed rail clamp and also the handle clamp, and align the clamp so that it's aimed in the desired direction of the supported speed rail. Fasten both the speed rail clamp and the handle clamp with adequate torque so that they will not shift under load. Repeat this process on the other side of the vehicle, ensuring that the height and orientation of the speed rail clamp matches the previously rigged suction cup assembly. After you've confirmed alignment, fasten the speed rail clamp and handle clamp assembly in place with adequate torque so that neither will shift under load. You can now place a length of steel speed rail between the clamps and close the clamps around the speed rail. If additional suction cups are able to be added, position a third or even fourth suction cup underneath the speed rail and actuate the vacuum pump to ensure proper seal around the perimeter. Fasten the speed rail clamp and then the handle clamp last. Repeat this process at the rear of the vehicle, adding as many suction cups as necessary along the length of the speed rail and confirming that all fasteners and clamps are fully torqued. Remove a fixed 90 degree clamp from the SSG kit case and position the clamp on the front rail biased towards the side you're working on. Position the other three clamps, ensuring alignment between the front and rear pairs and leaving the upper clamps open for speed rail installation. Place the longitudinal speed rail into the clamps, bridging the front and rear transverse sections and creating the speed rail grid. Fasten the upper clamps with adequate torque so that the rails will not shift under load. With the lower clamp still loose, ensure that there is 10 and 7 8 inches, or 27.7 centimeters, spacing between the inside of the rails. Prepare your radical base by placing it on a clean work surface. The corner of a sturdy table works well for accessing the base leg couplings. Locate a radical base leg labeled A and position it within the corresponding coupling. Install the vertical M12 fastener and torque it to specification. Then install the horizontal M12 fastener and torque it as well. Repeat the process for the base leg labeled B. With both A and B base legs installed, you can position the radical base on its side and repeat the process for the other A and B base legs. Correctly installed base legs will have the clamps aligned with the main cable exit. Open the base leg clamps and secure them in the open position by routing the supplied bungee cords around the clamps, legs, and M12 shanks, and then repeat on the other pair of base legs. With a partner, hoist the radical base over the SSG kit and place it onto the rails. Carefully remove the bungee cords from the clamps and then close the base leg clamps around the rails. With the base leg clamps still loose, Slide the base fore or aft to the desired position and then apply adequate torque to the clamps. Position the radical fulcrum upright and then locate the fulcrum X brace. Position the X brace onto the top of the fulcrum and then install the M12 fasteners with adequate torque. Lay the fulcrum onto its front or back so that you can access the fulcrum leg couplings. Add the fulcrum legs to the couplings, which are not positionally specific, like the base legs. Install and torque the vertical M12 fasteners, and then install and torque the horizontal M12 fasteners. Repeat this process for all four of the fulcrum leg couplings. With a partner, hoist the fulcrum onto the pedestal of the radical base. The fulcrum legs will slide along the track in the base pedestal, and then drop into the proper location. Confirm that the fulcrum front label is positioned correctly with the corresponding label on the radical base. Loosely install all eight M12 fasteners, waiting to torque them until all the fasteners have been threaded. The supplied swivel joint is used to access the inside fasteners. After all eight fasteners have been properly torqued, slide the radical base and fulcrum into the center position on the speed rail grid, and then torque the lower clamps on the four 90 degree speed rail clamps. Use the supplied ratchet straps to wrap one hook around the front side of the longitudinal rails, and then pass the other end through the cabin before attaching it to the opposite rail.
Repeat this process with the other strap at the rear of the speed rail rigging and through the rear of the cabin. If the radical fulcrum needs to be rotated 90 degrees for easy access of boom mounting, please skip to PSU setup and then return to this section after the fulcrum has been rotated so that it's aligned side to side with the vehicle. Open the rear boom case and remove the rear boom. Position the rear boom clip receiver over the rear of the X-brace and then slowly lower the boom until the holes are aligned and it's safely hanging. Install all six M12 fasteners securing the rear boom to the X-brace and fulcrum. Next, install the threaded bar into the rear boom, first turning it by hand to avoid cross-threading, and then using a 10mm hex key to provide adequate fastening torque. Remove the carbon fiber fairing and install it over the three M12 bolts pre-installed into the rear boom, and then apply torque to the bolts. Next, access the front boom case and remove the middle boom. Position the middle boom clip receiver over the X-brace and then slowly lower the boom until the holes are aligned and it's safely hanging. Install the six M12 fasteners securing the middle boom to the fulcrum and X-brace. Repeat this process for securing the front boom to the middle boom with six M12 fasteners. Finally, install the radical isolator onto the front boom by hanging its clip receiver over the end and installing the four M12 fasteners. For customers installing heavy lift, position the drive mount over the fulcrum and install the four M8 bolts. Repeat this for the passive mount, ensuring both are in the correct orientation. Install the center brace boom mounts, ensuring that the M4 fastener heads are facing up. If you're installing the end brace boom mounts for the first time, ensure that the front pair is distanced 280 millimeters from the radical isolator flange and that the rear mount assembly is installed through the gap in the rear boom. Pull two of the end braces from the rear boom case and position one end over the passive mount and the other on the rear mount. Install the two M8 fasteners securing the end brace at its two ends. Remove a center brace from the front boom case lid and position one end over the passive mount and the other end over the boom mount. Install the two M8 fasteners securing the center brace at both ends. Repeat this process once more for positioning the other end brace from the center brace to the front end brace boom mount. Repeat this process for the end braces and center brace on the opposite side or active side of the fulcrum. If you're installing the INS2 sensor for the first time, confirm that the lower mount is five and a half inches from the front boom flange. Remove the head adapter plate from the radical isolator and install it onto your payload over the appropriate hole pattern. After the plate is installed, weigh your payload, which is defined as all things hanging from the radical isolator. With the weight of your payload known, you can reference the payload versus counterweight chart to determine how much counterweight preload should be added. After adding the appropriate amount of counterweight preload, Mount your payload to the radical isolator by first installing the safety pin and then the four M6 fasteners. If additional counterweight is needed, add it to the weight bar at this time and fasten the counterweight lock knobs to secure the weights. Adjust the radical isolator air shock pressure so that the ride angle indicates 15 degrees. Make sure the blue lockout lever is in the disengaged or minus position for operation. Lift and release the isolator to make sure it's dampened properly for your application. Z-axis dampening can be softened by adjusting the dial in the fast direction, or stiffened by adjusting the dial in the slow direction. Deflect the payload 45 degrees and release it to make sure that the pitch and roll dampers are adjusted properly. If the payload overshoots and swings back and forth, increase the damping by turning the damper adjustment knob toward the hard, or H, direction it's critical that the dampers both be adjusted an equal number of clicks from the fully soft or hard side to ensure that the load is shared equally. Repeat this process for the pitch dampers. Remove the radical power supply unit, or PSU, and place it in the trunk of the vehicle, along with your 48 volt power source. If using the Motobat, plug it into the system power port using the standard cable set provided. If using the UPC, 
connect it to the system power port using the cable supplied with the UPC, and then proceed through the startup sequence by adding four equally charged batteries, turning on the charge input, switching on the 48 volt output, and letting the unit begin to charge. Connect the COM cable to the COM port on the PSU, and then the corresponding port on the command console. Connect the main power cable to the PSU, and then route the cable up to the radical base. Note the main cable exit label on the radical base, and route the main power cable underneath it to the main power socket on the bottom of the radical base. Next, connect the short main cable from the radical base to the fulcrum. And finally, connect the INS2 sensor cable to the sensor port and then the serial port on the radical base, securing the INS2 cable along the boom and routing the cable over the handle to avoid pinching. Before turning system power on, the radical fulcrum pin noted by the remove before flight flag must be removed. Now, confirm that the e-stop on the command console is engaged or press down and switch system power on. Upon power up, Radical will calibrate its onboard sensors and then bring you to the main navigation, where you can proceed with basic setup and configuration using the command console. Be sure to watch the basic setup and configuration video and read the command console operation manual in its entirety before operation of the arm. Thanks for watching.